professional photography of celebrities is an art form mm -hmm. all on its own. Annie Leibovitz, of course, made a whole career of it. That's right. Yeah. And for those lucky enough to work one on one with actors or musicians, they capture these stars in moments few others will ever be a part of. Yeah, and this week our photojournalist introduces us to a uniquely Detroiter a photographer who has traveled the world. A lot of people collect stuff, right? Whether it's art, whether it's music, you know, vinyl or baseball cards. I feel like I collect memories. I'm Jeremy Debutte and I'm a photographer. Being a photographer in this city is great. I feel like the city is better than a Hollywood backlot. I get to view things at a completely different perspective than anybody else. I mean, I've been all over the world many times, a lot of places that I would have never gone if it, you know, mostly, you know, was, was Amnet that has taken me everywhere. I've been to every continent with Marshall, besides Antarctica, and I don't plan on ever going there. It's, it's a pretty amazing opportunity to, to be in. I mean, especially for him, where they, you know, really don't let anybody photograph him. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of pressure as well, because, you know, we do, we're doing stadium shows. Everybody in the press needs photos from that, and I'm the only one there that needs to deliver. If I didn't come through and I didn't deliver, then they had absolutely nothing. What makes a good photograph and what makes a good photographer is the same thing, being able to capture the moment and, you know, being, I guess, ready whenever it happens. You never know what's gonna happen, right? So you kinda stay ready all the time. A few years ago, I shot a book for Kid Rocks. We were having so much fun and I was capturing so much stuff that I just stayed the whole time. So I think, you know, 10 shows turned into five months and we went everywhere. What I learned a lot about from him was how to stay ready. I just remember him saying to me one night, like, look, you're slow as hell and if you don't speed it up, you're not gonna, make, you're not gonna get anything, so. You know, he and he really pushed me to always be ready and shoot fast and like, you know, and, and that helped me out so much down the road. Kind of the grand finale of the tour was getting back home and, and doing America Park. Yeah, that was pretty amazing just to, you know, have did, did every venue across the United States and then kind of finishing it off here in Detroit at Comerica Park. That was definitely the, the moment of the tour for sure. What's it like to have your photograph on the cover of a magazine? I mean, it's great. It's, it's good for exposure, you know? Um, and it's, it's definitely kind of surreal when you, you know, walking around and you see it in the, in the newsstand or whether it's on a billboard or whatever, it's, it's, it's cool. The shot that I captured with, with Marshall and Rick Rubin was, was definitely, that was definitely a, a moment, you know, in, in my career. And, you know, it was funny, you know, Rick Rick was kind of just walking around, you know, no shoes on, and I, I had never worked with him before. He, he was super cool, and, you know, I still remember, um, you know, right before I captured that shot, Paul Rosenberg looked at me and he said, like, you know if you don't get this, you're going to hate yourself for the rest of your life. I ended up getting it. It took about, you know, they kind of looked at me for about three seconds. I got a couple frames off, and then they kept doing their thing, you know, so... Uh, that, that was, that's one that I remember, definitely a defining moment. Very, very cool. So yeah. Jeremy Deputat and Rick Williams both join us in that live in studio right now. Thanks for being here, guys. It's thanks good to see you. Yeah, yeah thanks Absolutely. for coming in. So how did you get into this? What's the story? I got into photography. I was, you know, originally an art director. I went to school okay. for graphic design, and I was kind of stuck behind a computer designing editorial. Mm -hmm. Uh, we never had budgets to hire good mm -hmm. photographers, so I was always having to deal with subpar photographs, and yeah. I just felt like I could at least do as good as what we were getting, right? And at least I'd know how to shoot it mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, the right negative space to design the pages, and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I started. And then I just realized I enjoyed that doing, you know, doing that a lot more than sitting at a computer. So yeah, cool. so I, you were shooting for what you wanted, not having to work with other people's stuff. Exactly. Nice. How about yeah, you, Rick? Yeah. I kind of got started at, um, I have a store in Royal Oak called Burn Rubber, and I got started because of product photography, and JD was actually the person oh, yeah. who kind of helped me learn the ins and outs of photography, so now we started a business together. So when you were talking in the piece there about this idea of firing off in a couple seconds, because mm -hmm. that skill of being able to turn, see a shot, you get it, mm -hmm. yeah, and then for stuff, important. great stuff to come out, that's a different kind of skill than some photographers who need you to sit, turn, mm -hmm. do, you know. Sure. 
How do you acquire that? Is that just innate? You just always had that idea? I think it's just from too many times of not getting the shot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Nothing we're showing like some learning great from your mistakes, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Hindsight is 2020. 20. The more you mess up, the more you learn, there right? There you go. But see, so you've got so many uh, people, of, you've got such access here. Yeah. I mean, you've shot a lot of very important, very cool Definitely celebrities. Definitely blessed to have the access yeah. that I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So let's talk about <clears throat> Trust the Shooter. What's that event all about? So, Trust the Shooter kind of started um, back in 2014 with me on set, mm -hmm. and it was with a client that was, you know, not so sure about the stuff that I was capturing, and mm -hmm. we were just having the conversation of, you know, we can always do a tighter edit on it, but we can't ever bring something back that we didn't capture. So, right. it was kind of like to just trust the photographer. I'm here yeah. working for you. Trust me to get what we need. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it was started. I ended up doing a hat with New Era, just because I always wear hats. If you know me, I wear like the same uniform every day, which okay. is pretty much what I have on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so does Mark Zuckerberg, you're in good right. company. Right, right, right. right. And, and, uh, oh, there's your photo, yeah. You know, the, the hat kind of started everything off, you know. Um, we flipped it to a two, with a few friends mm -hmm. on Instagram, yep. and it just kind of, you know, spread from there. And Rick and I have always been trying to find a way that we could work together, and, mm -hmm. you know, it always just had to be, you know, it can't be forced. It's got to come natural, and when we figure it out, okay. we will, and this kind of just happened. So. And here comes one of Rick's photos. You know, a lot of people don't know that a photographer, wow. a, a nickname is a shooter. We, yeah. we use that in this business yeah. all the time. Have you always yeah. talked to each other like that? Have you always called each other shooters? Or? We don't really call each other. No. Shooters is just like, like you said, it's just a term yeah. that's, that mm. we kind of adopted. For. What is this photo? This, this was actually, um, I was in, in New York on Broadway and it was, I think, right after the Eric Gardner situation. Mm. And I literally was walking across the street mm. and I just picked my camera up and, and shot the photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So isn't part of the trick just always having your camera with you? Yeah, 100%. Right? Because the there'll be times where I'm. The one you have with right. You. I'll be out and about and I'll be like, darn it, I left my phone in the car or yeah. at my desk or whatever. So that's a big trick. And the more you mess up a lot, then you'll get some good shots, right? Yeah. Right. Good. Definitely. So what, what, I mean, this, I'm going off track here, but what kind of advice could you give amateurs like us to getting a good shot? Uh, shoot a lot. Okay. <laughs> just shoot a lot? Yeah. The more you shoot, the better chance you're going to have something good in there. Right? And I know you just met us, but we look so much better in post-production. We really when do. When you get done, you can tweet. You know, that Photoshop thing yes. I mean, man, I look like a million yes. bucks. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about your exhibition one more time. Uh, you know, like I said, we, this brand was kind of started yeah. um, via Instagram. That's kind of okay. how it spread and became aware, you know, people became aware of it. So for this first show, we reached out to, you know, a bunch of our friends that are photographers that we respect and, and look up to. And, you know, Rick had a big ha hand in that, okay. trying to figure out what was the best fit. And, mm -hmm. and this is this Friday. March 4th, March 4th is yep. the start, right? At Interstate Gallery from 7 to 10. Okay, okay. good. Very Thanks, cool. guys. Thanks, Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for having yeah. your story and your, uh, your great photos. Right. Just good stuff. Man. Thanks for Take having Take more pictures, us. everybody. Yeah. Next